everybody and welcome back to another consignment update. Uh, we have quite a lot of stuff for you this week actually. Um, I initially thought, yeah, we've had 10 or so decent things in. I'll gather them all together and show you. And then when I actually started looking, I was amazed at how much has come just in the last week. So we're gonna have a look at some of those. Um, some really nice things, a lot of variation this week. Um, some classic vintage gear, uh, some quirky vintage gear, and a few modern pieces intertwined. So um, auction is on the 5th to the 8th of March. Catalog previews will be shortly be going up on the website. Keep following us on social media, it's always the quickest way to find out about what we've got coming up. So Instagram and Facebook, find us on there. Instagram's at Guitar Auctions and Facebook is uh, Guitar Auctions at Gardner Holgate. So have a look there because we, that's where we put things uh, first, well in advance. Have a look on our website. Uh, sign up to our mailing list so you're notified about these videos. And of course, subscribe to our channel, like the video, and hit the bell icon so you always know about these videos. Some of the more choice pieces will be demoed nearer the time of the sale, but that's enough of me waffling on. Let's have a look at the gear. So, fender on the case, and starting with a base, with a case that keeps going. So, this is a nice example of a 77 Fender Jazz Bass in factory black finish, maple board, block inlays, all specs of this year. And there we go, you see on the back, I mean, look at the back of the neck. That neck is in a very, very clean condition, much like the body. A few scratches and marks on the body, but it is a nice example with the case. So we have one for the lefties. And this is a very good acoustic guitar for those left-handed players. We do have a right-handed one by this maker coming up later, so we'll have a look at that as well. But this is a Furch guitar, OM35 model. Really nice, small-bodied, I guess OM-sized acoustic guitar. I actually had a client that came in and saw me last week and he was asking my opinion on Furch guitars. Um, and I've never played a bad one. Um, I, I think they are great guitars in general, obviously in different, different specs, but I mean, we've played a few. Haven't played this one because it's the wrong way around. Um, but I said to him, yes, very, very good. You won't be disappointed. And he said, well, that's good because I've just ordered one. And then suddenly one turns up this week and I, I haven't had a Furch guitar for years. And we've actually got two in the cell, a righty and a lefty. Like the, buses. Like buses. The right-handed one's actually a very, very high-specced guitar. This one's got uh, East Indian rosewood back and sides, um, internal electrics, mahogany neck, ebony fingerboard, Fishman electronics. Um, yeah, it's just a very, very good, good acoustic guitar with a cutaway. And in the protector case, must be late 70s, could be early 80s, but this is late 70s. This is a 78 Gibson Les Paul Custom. And the first thing you will notice is the Seymour Duncan pickups. So with that, along with the strap buttons, that is the only thing wrong with this guitar. Um, so otherwise original. Um, so regarding the pickups, I actually got asked a question uh, on one of our YouTube videos about T-top pickups and what we thought of them. I've got a lot of time for them. Um, they're a really good pickup. They do that whole, um, they, do, they basically do what you'd want, you know, with a Les Paul pickup. Uh, a lot of clarity and bite overdrive really well. But um, I guess you can get higher output pickups. Um, especially if you know you you want heavier rock tones so that's what these seymour duncans give you um so it's just one of those things where because it's an originality issue it detracts from the value of the guitar but you could argue it's actually an upgrade um depending on what you want but um yeah that is otherwise it's a good example nice sunburst finished 78 gibson les paul custom Now, I hope I'm not peeking too soon with this one. 
And I'm only saying that because this is the my favourite thing that I'm going to show you today. So it's not going to be everyone's favourite, but my favourite thing. So this is a 1973 Fender Stratocaster. And generally it's in great condition. The, uh, the aficionados amongst you will have already noticed the things that are wrong with it, which we will have a look at. So you'll see it's in, it's in good condition. It's got wear and tear on the body, which you should expect for the age, and it's pretty consistent for the age as well. Um, you're looking at a 50 year old guitar now. And this here with the pickups, uh, this is the DiMarzio Super Distortion Strat pickups, SD1s I think they are. Um, so higher output pickups, got the brass bridge, and you will notice no trem which is the reason why I've got a lot of time for this guitar, because I really don't like trems. Um, nothing necessarily against them, apart from occasional tuning stability, um, but I just, I can't be bothered. <laughs> really can't be bothered. Um, I, you know, I've, I think I've said it in previous videos, especially with effects pedals, I need to spend more time worrying about what I'm actually playing rather than trying to grab a wiggle stick. So. Uh, there we go, um, and we've got a replacement brass nut as well. Is that why you made me string up that Bixby the other day? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Bixby's aren't my bag. You're pretty good at a Floyd Rose though, aren't you? They're not, they're not. <laughs> but that is a, that is a good example um, with the case as well. So in this very new case, we have a very old guitar. So, giving off Mark Knopfler vibes. His auction's coming up, I think it's next week, isn't it? Next week, maybe, Christie's. That'll be a good event. Um, Hawaiian etching. This is a 1938 National Style O. There we go. So this one does have, it's, it's seen a life. You've just seen the back of the head, so you can see that the tuners have been replaced. There's been some work on the neck, some refinishing on the neck, um, some wear on the body. The two things really that are going to um, affect value is the cone has been replaced and the biscuit's been replaced. And there's also been a pickup installed, as you can see on the side of the body. Um, there's a little bug pickup that's been installed to the biscuit inside. But they're rare, and to be honest with you, most of these resonators from this era, you tend to find them bashed around. Um, not many good examples. Um, or not certainly not many great examples, um, but you can you can you can find them. We have had a few, but that is a 38 National Style O, nice resonator. One thing that seems to happen quite a lot in this place is we will um, we'll have a little discussion and say, God, we haven't had one of those in a long time. Well, we never get those in, and then we suddenly get a deluge of them come in. Now, in a comment in last week's video, someone said, Oh, no, ven no, no lefty stuff. Uh, or lefty guitars coming in and they've started arriving. So uh, from the late 70s, 1978 this one, lefty Fender Precision Bass, trans red finish. The finish has got um, some condition flaws, but it is an old thing. There we go. You can see how the decals differ on the, uh, on the left-handed things, but you'll see all the hardware is generally good. We got a bit of damage on the pit guard on the front, which which we've already had a look at um, there, but there it is. But otherwise, it's a good thing. So it's quite heavy, 70s, but if you want a base for your left-handed collection, there we go. What you should all really do is, if there's something that you'd like to see in our cells, you should let us know in the comments and maybe it will turn up. Was that thing this? So this is, we've never ha ever had one of these actually. Um, this is a L Gibson Les Paul Signature T. Um, there we go. So it's from the early 10s era. Um, so you've got the robot tuners, which we tend to see. You can always change those. Yeah, you can, you can knock those off. <laughs> um, you literally could knock them off. They're quite a block, aren't they? But um, a lot of people do change, change those, but you'll see this guitar's in great condition. Um, really, really like the finish on this actually. Really nice, the texturing there with the um, the way it it bursts in. 
and shows the maple through the lighter coat in the center so you see many of these this is a early 60s Hofner E1 solid body base and really it's in really good condition for its age um, checking some dings and marks but what else can you expect for the age there we go have a good overview of that on the back as well so these are these are fairly rare you don't see them that often um, and yeah they've become they've become quite collectible now um, used to get early hundreds for them and now they're sort of commanding late hundred figures um, I mean I'm talking quite a long time ago probably now 10 years ago it was probably the last time I saw one um, but this has what appears to be the original case as well so those of you who regularly follow our other social channels I mentioned at the start of the video Instagram and Facebook you'll have already seen this um, it's a really nice thing actually um, good example so you'll see we've got a Selma case it's an early 60s Selma case and we open it up to reveal there we go case keeps going a 1963 Fender Stratocaster now this is a good honest example it's been with the current owner since the 1970s and as you can see externally it's basically original the worst really is um there's a split to the back cavity plate and we've got we've got a screw missing there um, and you'll see obviously we've got the natural relicking um, we're always liking to open a debate about you know natural versus um well <laughs> yeah factory grown relicking um, but yeah this is a good good example now what is it like inside well fairly similar to the outside to be honest um, so all of the cavities are fine no routing or anything so that's all good under the guard we might even do a little bonus video and have a look inside just so you can see um, but the only changes really are the little rubber um, springs grommets um, for the pickup height adjusters they have been changed I think there's one original one in there um, so the height adjuster grommets have been changed but otherwise it is as it should be three-way switch all the pots check out to the right date the right cap um, and yeah really really nice example we've got the pencil date in the uh, back cavity there um, dating to 63 we've got the correct stamp on the end of the neck potentiometers all check out so that is a good original sunburst 1963 Fender Stratocaster and that will bring a lot of interest I'm sure um, but pre-sale guide 15 to 20 thousand um, that is what we'd, ex we'd expect to see on it um, but yeah it's a nice thing so we've just seen something very traditional and old from the 60s and now we're going to see something incredibly rare very quirky from the 60s this time british made but this is this really is a lovely thing actually um and it's I, i'm pretty sure it's the first one we've had i may have had one 10 to 15 years ago that needed a lot of work but you can see original case original fitted case but it's a 1960s vox guitar organ you can see there is a um, there's a control knob missing there. We do actually have that. It's in the case, but it's in good condition generally. We have a look, and on the back as well, there's some chipping coming away from the side of the neck there. Um, and yeah, it's quite a wacky thing. Unfortunately, we can't test it because the um, the power amp has a non-conventional plug um, so we are trying to find ways to see if we can find anyone that can help us out with that I'm sure we'll find someone and then if we work our way over here we can see it's got its original guitar organ power block in the case original strap 
as you can see there there's the original knob that's missing we've even got the case key so that's a really really nice example um, so selling on behalf of the original owner um, so it's a nice thing and yeah pleasure to have and it'll be interesting to see what it makes so in this little case you've probably guessed it we have a lap guitar and this is a Rickenbacker so this is from 1964 this is an M100 model um, got its original paintwork there silver paintwork all in nice it's, it's basically in original condition apart from this plaque is where it's supposed to be now but someone at some point had placed it up on the head so you can see the vacant holes there where someone had placed it but it is supposed to be on the side to have been put back there um, but otherwise it's all it's all good and then we've got the original case a lovely sweet little thing and here we have another great vintage piece and probably the only Gretsch I personally want to own I'd like mainly because I'm a solid body player more than anything else I'm not a big fan of hollow body guitars personally although I do think they um, I like the aesthetic of them but I just don't get on with them um, but this is a Gretsch Dewar Jet and this is from 1956 and the Gretsch aficionados will be seeing or commenting right now that the inlays on that fretboard are not correct for this year these little thumb inlays and you would be right so I actually prefer the aesthetic of these thumb inlays anyway but it is thought that this guitar was re-necked by Gretsch in the late 50s hence it having um, having this neck on there um, there were a lot of issues with the necks of these in the 50s hence them going back to Gretsch and being necked again so a 56 with slightly differing specs it does it certainly does look like a Gretsch neck um, you'll see here the heel cap has been replaced that's something that often goes and the plastics on the back here have also been replaced but other than that it's all as it should be um, it's got its original case and the original case is in really nice condition as well um, but lovely checking on the body there but there we see in its original case and we even have some ooh, original Gretsch documents as well so those of you who have been with us as loyal subscribers and viewers since last year you saw we would have seen we had two of these last year we had a prototype version in green and then a sort of standard production run in white but this is a very rare guitar um, 1985 these were from and this is the Fender Performer I love them it's something different really quirky they sound great they're great players as well uh, but re really good true Japanese quality this is not as good an example as the one we had last or the ones we had last time where they were in incredible condition really um, this one is a bit more beaten up this happens to have come from the same owner as the previous two as well so it's another one that he had so he had a good share of the market of these because they are quite rare new Martin case we have a much older Martin so this is a 1964 Martin 0021 and it's in great condition it's a really really lovely thing and I'll just turn it over there and you can see the Brazilian rosewood back and sides lovely grain on that site certified I will add as well selling with the correct A10 document to allow the legal sale of the guitar within the UK and of course elsewhere obviously you need extra export certificates to ship it out of the UK for those of you who are watching from overseas and are interested in bidding and getting it over to you so yeah just a really nice good example <laughs> Also very nice if you want a natural 335 there we go so this one is from I'm just gonna remind myself yeah 1988 
uh, natural finish. But really, really nice bird's eye maple on there. Little bit, tiny bit of stand burn there, nitro burn. Be careful storing your guitars on your stands. But you see it's in, it's in great condition. You see the mahogany neck in fantastic order. You see the serial number there confirming your 1988 dates with the first and fifth digits, for those who didn't know. And yeah, great condition. Frets a little tarnished, need a little bit of cleaning. Some of the hardware also tarnished, but this can be cleaned up. And there it is in its case, a 1988 Gibson ES335. Right, so this is lucky dip time. I can't remember what's actually in here. And there we have it, modern Gibson. So Gibson SG standard, this is from 1995. So good period. Um, you'll see the pickups have been changed. They are bare knuckles, um, bare knuckle pickups, sort of the P90 type. And yeah, cherry finish in really nice condition. Everything else externally appears to be original. And we're selling it with a modern Hiscox case. Can't believe I just said modern on that last guitar and it's actually nearly 30 years old. 27 year old guitar and we're calling it modern. Um, but in vintage guitar standards, I guess that is. Um, this is a little bit more modern. 120th anniversary Gibson Les Paul Classic. And it's just in nice clean condition with the original case. There we go, 2014 of course is the 120th year and as you can see in fantastic condition so i like to feature boutique makers in these videos especially very very good ones and um, it's usually guitars that i personally have a lot of time for so this is the pjd apprentice model and what more do you need apart from that one pickup probably one knob too, too many, many <laughs> but uh yeah, some people will like to play around with the tone. I don't, but Volume, <laughs> this is um, this is very, very good. Um, a lovely guitar, really lovely, lightweight um, guitar, um, lightly relicked or checkered body. Um, so not much relicking, but sort of nice nitro checking there and really nice neck, really, really flamey neck. And the, the carve on this neck is quite interesting because down down by the cowboy cords uh, position, the neck is quite thick and then it thins out towards the top. So um, yeah, it's a really, really nice thing. Here we have another PJD Guitars boutique guitar. This is the Woodford Elite model. So I guess you would probably say slightly higher end appointments. Um, of course, you've got the two P P90 pickups uh, on that stunning maple top. And you've got the natural back there as well. Really, really nice thing. I love the contrast with this uh, sunburst matching from the front. And again, really, really nice uh, piece of wood on the neck there. Ebony board with the inlays that are a bit different. But there we go, PJD guitars, go and check them out. But we have two of their guitars coming up in our next auction. So here we have another Furch guitar and we saw a left-handed one earlier. Here's a right-handed one, once I can get all the latches on the case. So this is an incredibly high-end guitar of theirs. This is the Furch Red Deluxe, and it's got so many nice appointments on it. Um, so really, really nice uh, figured top there, but I just love this contouring, this maple contouring, and there's actually one on the back as well. So really comfortable to play. Um, nice rows of back and sides uh, usual mahogany neck and look at that board really really nice board with the um with the intricate roman numerals inlays there but that is a very very nice guitar indeed and that is one of the highest end model furch guitars you can get it's in great condition with the original case and some of you will have seen um, a couple of amps probably in the background. Um, so we've got some decent amps coming in. So we've got a um, around about 1980, one of the last silver face uh, faces of the period, uh, Fender Champ. That's a nice example. 
and then you will see next to that we have a Marshall that's the 1959T this one has actually been reboxed but the uh, all the gubbins inside are okay a few changes um, some of the power tubes have been changed but that's a 1971 Marshall 1959T um, in good working order um, so yeah some nice amps coming up in the cell so an artist related guitar not artist owned but associated and this is the Epiphone 12 string Bard Oh Pretty Woman model, Roy Orbison. Of course, one of the best selling songs of all time. Um, there we go, with the signature on the back, with its original case. It's in nice condition, and these continue to go up in value. Um, limited things. Nice example. So, this is a very rare guitar indeed. Uh, made in Japan, this one. This is an Electra MPC X710 model, and this is the um, this is one of the mo the rarer versions. Um, this style with the um, and this one's actually got the peace sign. So you see a lot of the Les Paul style Electras, um, and then you see a f these models as well. But not all of them have this peace sign. So this is one of the um, the rarest ones. But the quality of these guitars just incredible. Um, you can see all the abalone inlay there on the ebony. Uh, Madagas Madagascan ebony fingerboard and yeah, it's just a really quirky wacky thing there you can see all the details on the back there but the interesting thing about these guitars is in the back here use the tape to prise it open you have these um these cards that go in and give you different effects options now we actually have about four different modules that are going to be going into the part section um, on the third day of the cell that work with this guitar so if you fancy um fancy a bit of fun um they they don't come in at huge money mid hundreds um but that is a nice fun thing and one of the rarer models of the hat trying to awkwardly play that while stood up um casio dg20 is what it is it's got its original box which is a nice feature because i don't think i've ever sold one with an original box and i've sold quite a few i think i probably need to fine tune how you actually get all the notes to sound properly because that probably wasn't the best demo in the world there are some really good instagram guitarists who um who are really really good at, um getting these playing with wrangling every note Casio. yeah exactly wrangling a casio dg20 um but a lot of fun and with the original box and manual another 60s fender for you this time a fender mustang from 1966 so it's not bad condition wise it has been refinished um in this white paint but it's nice that it's got its original case um, you see there the original decal um, there's a few changes internally new switches i think one of the pots been replaced as well um, the original bridge we do have that's um one of the better working replacements as a, as a common mod but that is a 1966 fender mustang with original case so jumping from the 1960s to the 70s here we have a 1977 fender telecaster in factory black finish maple neck and this is in good condition some wear and dings but again very consistent for a guitar that is approaching 50 years of age and that is a good example probably the oldest guitar we're featuring today is this 1930s gibson l7 and as you can see it does look that old um, but this is mid 30s so 35 36 
Um, the reason we know this is because it's got the 17 inch body so it can't be first year and it's also X braced inside which was an earlier feature. Um, I, th I, th I believe they went ladder braced or parallel braced in 37 or 38 so um, yeah mid 30s L7 nice condition good high appointments on this you've got the inlays on the board there um, you see the script logo at the top there and obviously replace tuners grover tuners but it everything's consistent really for a for a used guitar of its age and comes with a period case this is a another really really nice old gibson guitar we have a circa 1966 gibson es335 12 string and this is a nice example with the case um, when i say nice example you'll obviously see the checking there which i think is nice the checking looks nice good honest nitro checking there but yeah good condition in general for the age necks in good shape as well quite often you can see these necks banana a little bit but yeah it's a nice thing and i think if i had to own a vintage 12 string it would probably be one of those so last guitar of this week's episode and it's another oldie Well, this time it's a 1965 Gibson ES125 and another mid-60s guitar in great condition. Um, checking as to be expected for the age. So really nice original finish on that one. You see the brown back, the light brown back, and you'll see not much wear on there at all, a few dings. And the neck very consistent. You see some play wear on there. But original tuners, original strip tuners there, and then you'll see going down again, all nice and complete as it should be. Doesn't have its original case, um, but it does come with a hard case. A bit of scratching there, but that is a nice example of a 1965 Gibson ES125. Thanks for joining us for this week's episode, ladies and gents. That is it for now. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that, and I'm sure you'll all agree that was a good eclectic mix of things. Um, some old vintage, some quirky vintage, classic vintage, and some modern things as well. Um, the auction's on the 5th to the 8th of March. Catalog previews on the website guitarauctions.com, or they will be appearing on the website soon. And of course, follow us on all our social media channels to keep up to date with what we have coming up well in advance of the sale. Please, as always, remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video, hit the bell icon for future video up uploads. You will see some of these um, classic pieces and better pieces demoed by uh, Jack. Um, he'll put some great demos up nearer the time of the sale and the full catalogue should be up online in mid-February. But like I said, thanks for joining us this week and we'll see you again next time. Mm -hmm.